Gallery House and Worth is celebrating its 30th anniversary. The gallery already has many spaces around the world and is now adding a few more, including their first space in Paris. Welcome to Swiss Art Biz, goes Löwenbroi Kunst, I'm Tanya König. And today I'm joined by Barbara Corti, who is a partner at House and Worth at their Zurich-based gallery located at Löwenbroi Kunst. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Tanya. So uh, I mentioned that you're celebrating your 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. I almost lost overview of the many galleries that you have around the world. We have right now we have about 16 galleries and which includes also spaces in um, Menorca, Somerset, Chilita Leku. So there are there are many and we're very excited for Paris to open up. We have West Hollywood opening in the fall with um which is another exciting opportunity for us. And then there will be an extension of London coming as well. So it's it's pretty crazy. And yeah, but I mean, it has to do with um, what Ivan always says, like with going local. So we have to be local, but also we have to be connected globally. And we really are doing a big effort in in doing this and I think in achieving this because you also want to have local galleries for the community for people they they should feel invited to come and visit a gallery also not out of the art world and maybe not collectors and it's really an effort also to have um, as I said like Somerset is maybe a good example to include the community a lot there as well. We do organize things which are mostly for people based there. We include kids. That's another thing, maybe the whole um, educational effort we're doing in many spaces. We want to do that more in Switzerland as well. This is one of my goals for, for the Löwenbräu because I think there are a lot of possibilities there as well. In Menorca, Bradford, maybe our first show when we opened was a good example. He invited the local school students to also collaborate with him on an art project. So I think this is also one of the things where we think it's important to be locally rooted. Yeah, so you mentioned Menorca and Somerset. Of course, these are special galleries being located in a almost resort like or environment in Somerset mm -hmm. uh, in the countryside somehow yeah. it's a farm in Menorca on an island where you also have time to be mm -hmm. there um yeah so that differs of course to locations like Zurich mm -hmm. um and you just came back to Zurich I guess no in 2020 you 20, came, summer 2020 yeah you were in uh, New York before that um so how does that compare coming back from from New York to Zurich I was asked this question recently. It is um, quite um, a change, I have to say, because I was gone 14 years. I left. I was with Hauser in until 2006 and left then and um, yeah, 14 years. And it is a totally different, um, I would say it's more like let's make it work attitude than I, I kind of realize there has there is a lot of kind of oh, like complaining about things which don't work and are not the way they're supposed to be. Whereas in, in, in New York, at least it's 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 a lot of let's just make it happen. And people are positive about it. And it's also I think what's a big difference is the, the international melting pot, because I mean, there are most people are not originally born in New York. I mean, at some point you are considered a New Yorker when you live there for a while, but it is, um, yeah, it's much more, I feel like it's also in in the art business, It's you have way more visitors every day and not necessarily people who want to buy something. They just come and visit the galleries and see it as an opportunity to see art, which is obviously amazing. And that's one thing also, which I'm sometimes hoping that this will happen, that there is not this, we call it Schwellenangst in uh, in German, where people feel like, oh, I can't go in there. It's an art gallery. I have to buy something. I mean, we, we have shows which are basically museum shows. Mm -hmm. So like people are, you pay no entry, you're invited. Anyone is invited to come. Do you think that, do you ha do more efforts in New York that people come or is it, a, you don't need to care? 
I think one big difference maybe is, um, I mean, the Löwenbräu also hosts several galleries and uh, two museums, but um, in, I mean, we, our bigger gallery, I mean, we have two galleries, one on 69th Street, which is on the Upper East Side, is different than the one in Chelsea, which is very busy, because that's kind of, you can go from one, there are like several streets and you kind of go from one street to the next and you see all the galleries basically. And uh, and then there is the High Line, which attracts a lot of tourists. So sometimes we had buses of tourists who just kind of popped into the gallery, which is funny. <laughs> and it's it's just a totally because I was shocked coming from Zurich, where you have in a in a busy day. I mean, you can have several, obviously several people, but you never have on a day more like a thousand people or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just not happening. And uh, th I don't, I mean, we did a lot of efforts. We did do a lot of um, uh, events and also for different, like we did concerts. We really- In New York. In New York. Mm -hmm. We really did an effort, but we're, we're trying to do this more and more here as well to really, I think we've done it always. I mean, it's not, um, I mean, there have been talks, conversations always, and I I realize it's it's well um, received actually also here that people enjoy to come and and I know the Löwenbräu. I mean, we're trying to all collaborate together to. I mean, there are the things with the Arsuri Art Week and that's always been very successful, and now um, there has been other weekends, and that helps a lot, yeah. obviously, because that brings in more people and. So your uh, the first gallery of Hauser and Wirth actually was based in, in Löwenbräu, which is this complex in Zurich, uh, where there are a few art galleries or uh, art spaces. And yes, it's true that uh, maybe people don't dare to enter. Um, but sometimes you also get the feedback that you enter a gallery and you feel awkward because then you might not be greeted or, you know, you feel a bit displaced. I hope that people feel, I mean, if not, it's not good. But I mean, I this is a, a thing we also in New York always said, it's it's very important that whoever sits in front is kind of the face of the gallery and needs to be welcoming. And I mean, I really hope and it's, it's, a, it's a joint effort that people should feel welcomed. And I mean, as I said, we're also trying to get schools and to, to do collaborations there. But yeah, people shouldn't feel they can walk around and and I feel like the space downstairs, especially, I think is because you can go around, you don't necessarily are watched from all sides. So I feel like there is 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 plenty of space to to wander around and and yeah. experience an exhibition without feeling watched. watched. Or Absolutely. No, I mean, I, I visited as well myself. I think it's more a idea in the minds yeah, yeah. of people yeah, yeah. Um, with, you know, seeing this big entrance and it's almost like it's empty if I entry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. more that conscious. Okay, well, let's come back to 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 the topic of locations. We started talking about all these locations around the world. Um, and when you started at Hauser and Wirth, there was just one location. Yeah, it was just Zurich. And um, I I was still in Zurich when Ivan and Manuela moved to London and we opened Piccadilly, which was a former bank building. So that was very exciting. And then, yeah, so then there, there was Copper Mill at some point. And I mean, there, yeah, there was the, the Zurich location. I mean, we did collaborations at the Locremis at the time when we had Zurich. We did a big show with uh, Christoph Büchel at the time and also with Jason Rhodes. But it, basically as a gar art space, gallery space, it was when I started, it was just Zurich. That was in 2005. Yeah. That's pretty crazy what happened within all these yeah. years. A lot happened. How come? I think, I mean, Ivan has always, as, and Manuela too, they're always looking for new opportunities for like, what should uh, the gallery of the future look like? I think there is never like, oh, now it's comfortable. We're not going to move on anymore. It's a constant like, what could should come next? And I think that also shows in 
how what we're doing with examples like Menorca or Somerset because it gives a more immersive experience to a visitor. It's not only just looking at the art space, you can have really good meal and uh, it's kind of a combination of, of uh, different experiences and we can invite the local communities there as well to, to be part of it. So I think and then we have the publishing department. I think they have always been a big need and we have a lot of artists, which obviously need spaces, need spaces too, to do shows, exactly. But um, yeah, it's and then there are some, like New York was kind of on the hand that we needed to open there as well, because just out of the art market, because it makes, it makes sense. Paris is another one. Um, so it's it kind of yeah comes naturally, but we constantly all of us have to look what should come next because time change as we know. Mm -hmm. So you will keep on opening spaces. Is that the thing? I don't know if we keep on opening spaces. I mean, at some point, maybe there is enough. But I mean, it is I think it's more about like yeah, how can you experience uh, art? So what do you what do you offer? In, and not only White Cube. I mean, we have White Cube spaces, but that's kind of, I think, differences us from other galleries who maybe only have a White Cube space. And I think to, to have a gallery like 69th Street in New York, where you can see art in a local setting, or Gstaad, uh, Gaza, uh, the, the, not Gaza, but the, the, the house in Gstaad, I mean, that gives clients a possibility to be more private and experience how it maybe looks in their house mm -hmm. and not in a, in a space with high ceilings and just white walls mm -hmm. and no furniture in mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. I think that's one thing which I, I feel like makes us different. You're opening all these spaces and it seems like it's happening fast. But on the other hand, the Paris space, it's been 15 years in the search, basically. I mean, it maybe looks like they happen fast. It's a lot about opportunities and possibilities because I mean, some I mean, it sounds like it, but I mean, there are, there is a lot of the time um, moments where, I mean, you interviewed Ivan and he said at the time with St. Moritz, there was a similar situation. There was a possibility coming up. We always wanted to be located in the Engadine and this opportunity came up when we, we had to take it. And Paris, knowing, being with the gallery for a long time, I know this was on the list for a while, but it just never was the perfect thing. We were several times close to finding something but it needed to be the right thing and i think that is it looks maybe that it's always so fast but there is a lot of work behind it and research obviously it's also interesting then you also need kind of patience because you might have this urge to want, want to be in paris yeah but it has to be the right fit because as i said earlier we don't I think we always try to find something which matches our DNA and uh, which also has, I mean, there is, it is a family run business still. And I think that also is shown in how our locations look, that there is still some, a lot of like, I feel like a lot of personal touch in it as well. And so it is. Yeah, it is is important to to really feel this is it mm -hmm. and not like just take whatever. Because one could also just open a temporary space to be there and be like, OK, whenever the next opportunity arises, the perfect one, we change. Yeah, yeah. no, we had those moments where we thought doing pop up. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has always been um, an idea, and when we did that, like before, people were talking about pop up was the Copper Mill collaboration in uh, in London, which was outside of of London, and that was a temporary space. But I think for a proper gallery for us um, in Paris, because it's a really important location, we felt it has to be the the right thing, and not. And what what does the right thing mean? Here, I think it is the. the a feel of you walk in and you feel like this is us and uh, I mean that I feel there there are all like I we all I think working there see sometimes spaces where we feel like that could be house and worth I think it's not the average 
space. And I mean, it's also, like Paris is also location. There are several factors who play in. Where do you mm -hmm. want to be? Which area? Do you want to be in the Marais or not? And uh, so, I mean, there was a lot of research done also. Mm -hmm. Strategically yeah. making yeah. sense as well. Um, it's funny because in the beginning you mentioned West Hollywood that you're opening, mm -hmm. um, London be becoming bigger, uh, and you said that you wanted to be local, local as well. But then, for instance, in in Los Angeles, you already have a big space. Yeah, we do, but I mean, it's a bit maybe the Southampton model. We opened during uh, the lockdown in Southampton, um, outside of New York, a gallery space. And that was also an opportunity which came up, and that is kind of was the moment where we had to bring the art to the to, the, to our clients. And this was because everyone was, I mean, or a lot of not everyone, but a lot of our clients were out in the Hamptons at the time, and so we felt like we have to bring it close to them. And that's similar, I would say, in in West Hollywood because a lot of clients live around there, and as you know. I'm sure um, it can take a very long time to get from one place to the other. I think we did. That has been a lot of local um, uh, collaborations. Like Stason is very good, the director of the space in in LA, of making sure the the community is included. And it's also like it's basically a block. So you walk through the gallery space as a visitor to go at, get from one place to the other. So you don't necessarily need to walk into the exhibition spaces. There is a courtyard with a restaurant. So you can just like have a meal and leave again. Or you can, if you feel like it, you can look, but you can also get from one place to the other. And I think downtown LA has changed a lot within the years since we were there. But I think it is important to also have a West Hollywood location because yeah, it's takes away some time for certain people to play. absolutely with the car and everything in Los Angeles. Uh, you mentioned also the restaurants. So do you need to be more than just showing art being a gallery because uh, House and Bridge has a restaurants a hotel, I think as well. Or, um, yeah, I think it has to do with uh, or not. I think it, it does has to do with if you like to eat and you people need food and and if you like good food, you like good wine, you might also want to look at art. So it is kind of the idea of combining it together and having an ex experience. experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has been very successful. And we always find someone to to really um, run run it. I mean, we don't do this. So Manuela in LA is an external like company, basically, who who does it. And the same for Menorca. We found, I think they have a vineyard also. And so there is good wine. But I mean, we, we are not like doing the restaurant business in that way. So but I mean, it is someone who is locally from there and knows the, the whole uh, area and everything. And uh, yeah, that is basically the idea Like you can hang art in there, obviously. And I mean, not in Menorca because it's outdoors, but um, the restaurant, but in, in LA, we have art in there and people should feel comfortable eating a meal and being surrounded by art. But um, I think, yeah, it's also nice. I mean, in New York, we had when we moved or we had it, I mean, the first space when I restarted working with Hauser in January 2013, we opened the Chelsea space, which was the former Roxy space. I was there. And I mean, that was, it was, it's such a historical thing because a lot of New Yorkers have gone out there and uh, I think Madonna performed once there. So it has a lot of history, this space. And we had the, the son of Dieter Roth built in the, the bar. And I think that was another moment of like not the the regular gallery because I, even like for clients, they enjoyed a lot because it was almost a bit an alternative. I mean, it was very it wasn't very a neat space and uh, or an elegant space. It was quite artistic. And you, you said you've been there, so you know. But I think people enjoyed it a lot. And it was great to have looking at the exhibition together and having a coffee afterwards. 
Absolutely. And just not being like feeling like, okay, I look at the art and then I have to walk out again. That's it. So being and at the time, there weren't a lot of places for having a coffee in Chelsea just to sit down and have a coffee. Now it's become better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was there at your gallery uh, in Chelsea and uh, I had a coffee at the bar and I really loved it because you're walking around in New York and then you also don't just want to walk in and look around and leave. Exactly. You, you also want to enjoy and, and be there. So I think that's actually a good a way of attracting an audience that maybe is not only the art loving audience, but could you imagine doing something like that in Zurich? I mean, we now, thanks to uh, Löwenbräu, who kind of, I mean, Jacqueline, I think she found the Loi, which is a new restaurant, which was the, I mean, originally was a bookstore. And there was not such good uh, restoration before. And now I feel like this helps a lot for us. And uh, it's kind of, I mean, internally, even us, the staff, we all go often and have or get lunch there. And uh, it's a total different experience. And I think in that way we have it now. We can even, I have bring clients sometimes there. The food is good. It's a changing menu daily. And I feel like it, it comes close to how they do it, the way we would do it. Like it's kind of a very personal experience. The staff is super nice. And as I said, changing menus every day, which I'm like impressed because it's a lot of work for them. So I feel like we have this right now. And I think that is great because it helped tremendously to reactivate the building because I think they got good reviews. So people come and yeah, I agree. Uh, Löwenbräukunst now with a restaurant actually where you can also sit outside. Yeah, exactly. You might also find a reason just to go there for a drink. And, and then look quick around. And I know I've, I've seen a lot of people having meetings there. So it's from the area also who are interested in art. So it's actually a great thing. And uh, I don't think, I mean, we've built the bar also in, you, you probably experienced this, I wasn't here, but there was, I think, once before Christmas where we had the Roth bar kind in of- In Zurich. In Zurich. You had a party. It was a party, yes. I only heard I wasn't present. It was amazing. Yeah. I heard that. So I think that that it was fun. But I mean, we I, it's not a plan to have her a restaurant right now in, in Zurich, because as I said, I think Loy helps mm -hmm. tremendously. That party in Zurich, Löwenbräu, I think it's six, seven years yeah. ago, um, where you had a party. It was so much fun. Yeah. You should do that more often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, um, yeah, maybe. I am, I am quite interested in, in your time in New York as well, uh, because you went there in 2006. Yeah. And um, you first worked for uh, seven years for a local gallery. So not so you were at Hausenwirth in Zurich. You saw the very first gallery, then you went to New York. You worked for a gallery there. Yeah. Um, ha yeah. I mean, I worked f with artists at the time in Zurich. So I was, we call it artist liaison. So you work lo like only with, with artists and help to set up shows and everything for them. And it's a team effort in, in at Hauser. So it's always a, a salesperson together with the artist liaison. It's kind of a team for each artist. So we collaborate on everything. And um, I, yeah, I moved 2006 and I, I got a job at 303 Gallery, which is a small gallery owned by Lisa Spellman, who started in 84. And uh, it was a great experience for me. I never thought I would end up in sales, but I did. How come? Pretty fast, because it's just like, you have to do everything. I mean, at the time when I started, there was not even a registrar in, uh, and I realized at some point coming from Hauser already at the time we had a reg we had registrars that it makes a huge difference because they just know what they're doing and are good with all the paperwork and shipping things and, and uh, but it was a, it was a really good experience for me. And I had to do everything like we sometimes got out when on Saturday when the client came and there was no art handler there. I went and put on the gloves and got the work out of the storage to show. So I think it was and I learned I mean, what I mostly learned was I learned a lot of I got to know a lot of people because Lisa is from New York. She's born there. And um, 
I um, met basically through, thanks to her, the whole New York art scene. And I mean, I was thrown into like going to benefits and um, and I had to do it by myself because a smaller gallery doesn't buy a table. They buy maybe one one spot. And so I think that made me meet a lot of people in the art world. And also New York is very welcoming, I would say for anyone, because it's, uh, there is a, a a curiosity and uh, yeah, like a, a, a spark of like new people coming in. Everyone wants to meet and like you get introduced immediately. And so it's 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 been um, quite a, a change from Switzerland. We talked earlier about this. This is just like not the regular Swiss attitude. You get introduced to everyone. And um, I think in that way it was made easy, but I have to say it's also a different work. I had to adjust. It's, it's, um, I felt like I worked very independent when I was in Switzerland. And, and then suddenly there was much more, yeah, I was much more asked like, oh, how are you doing this? And, and blah, 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 instead of just doing it. But that was the beginning and then, I was I was there seven years, so I was a, became a director there, and then they asked me to come back for the opening of the Roxy Space because I've been in touch with Mark Payo, who is the the business partner of um, Ivan since many years. He's basically there from almost the beginning, and he moved to New York 2008 to do 69th Street, and. When yeah, when we had the, the Chelsea space opportunity, he said you should come back and, and run back the space. And uh, I knew what I was getting into, so I I did it, and I was very happy I did. It was a lot of work because to open a space is is uh, is a lot than the big space, but it was uh, it was I, I don't regret it at all. Mm -hmm. But I also had a, a great learning curve at at 303. So seven years at 303 and then another seven years uh, in New York to open the Chelsea space. Yeah. And that has quite evolved in New York as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was already 2006. There were a lot of galleries. I mean, I think they all originally started in the 80s in Soho, a lot of them. And um, but when I moved, Chelsea was already very busy. I mean, there were a lot of galleries there. But um, it has changed a lot again since then. And uh, so I think it, yeah, for us, it was a really exciting moment to have this historical place. And and uh, our first show, we opened with Dieter Roth and Björn Roth, which was great too. That's why the bar made sense. But he's also such an important artist for the gallery and such an important artist for many other artists has been so influential. So, and we wanted to open with a Swiss artist, obviously as well. So, yeah, but I mean, it it did, it has changed. I mean, some gallery have moved now to Tribeca, others have moved Upper East Side. So I think, but there is still the core, I would say is still in, in Chelsea and you get, and now you have the new Whitney there. You can walk to the Whitney. The High Line is beautiful, so. And how come did you, why did you come back to Switzerland, back to Zurich from such an exciting place? I mean, there was, it was a bit of crazy time from, as you know, from, I mean, New York was tough. I mean, it was one day to the other, we had to close the galleries and there was the lockdown and uh, we had to resync our whole um, gallery kind of day-to-day -day business because, I mean, suddenly we, we were not, we had to go um, digital. And uh, which, I mean, thanks to our amazing team, we were able to do it quite fast. And uh, I mean, they worked day and night and it was really impressive what they put up. And we, we did the two, I mean, the first two shows were, the, I think the very first was Rashid Johnson. And then um, uh, George Kondo works on paper and it sold out like immediately. All and digital. All digital and I think there was such a, I mean, I'm sure you know that too, but at the time, a lot of people went digital, did conversations and everything. And I think people had time and they really wanted to 
get kind of some other input. And um, I think it was made easy for clients to to look and decide what they wanted. And also we did a lot of conversations. So, but we had to really rethink our whole system because I mean, we are we are used to have uh, that I, I get together with you. Maybe we talk over the phone or something, but at least like you come in, you look at the art. And I mean, the, the, the complete change before, I mean, obviously we have clients all over the world who sometimes buy from uh, a JPEG, but they might know already the art artist. And like to to do it only digital was was quite a challenge. And and then life got really hard in in New York. And we moved. I moved back. Or we moved with the family up to uh, uh, upstate New York mm -hmm. for thinking it would be two weeks. And uh, we ended up renting several months, and uh, and then there was the, the the question. Yeah, it was a long time question when you're in in New York for so long. Life is is tough during the lockdown. No, life is in general. Mm -hmm. It's a a very uh, intense city, mm -hmm. so you have a lot of. Um, yeah, it's, I, I kind of always sometimes felt like the, the hamster in the wheel. Mm -hmm. You're just like, it's a constant buzz in that mm -hmm. city. Even if you're trying to do yoga and trying to be calm, mm -hmm. there is this. You're almost always performing or always. Yeah, and it's also the, your surroundings because they expect you to perform. I mean, not I'm not talking about the gallery in general, the yeah, yeah. city. Like you walk out in the street, you're out there and you have to be ready for it. And I think that, I mean, I'm not the same age, obviously, anymore as I was when I left. So I, I, f I started to feel that it, it was tougher. And also the daughter, like my daughter, who is now nine, will be soon 10. I think I, or we, we realized at the time that life in Switzerland would probably be easier in many ways. And, and there was this moment of like, either we do it now or never. Mm -hmm. And I never thought that we move back, to oh, be honest really? with you. And uh, I felt, I mean, I felt, and I still love New York, will always love New York, but I felt very comfortable there. I think with the whole um, way of how people are, I, I always felt very at home. And uh, I was afraid to move back, to be honest. Because I was like, oh my God, I've been gone. I mean, obviously we always came back on a regular basis, but if you come for Art Basel and you come for Christmas, it's not the same. And uh, I was like, Oof, I don't know if I can deal with this. And then I got offered to, when I said that this is basically what we were hoping to do, like I got offered from Ivan and Mark to, to run Leuvenbräu and St. Moritz. And uh, because we knew already at the time that we're going to open Bahnhofstrasse, which James is in charge and Gstaad, he's in charge. So it's too, to to do Gstaad and St. Moritz just was not too much. Yeah, no, it's also, they're so far, far apart <laughs> that it was, it started to be really hard for him to, mm -hmm. to be in all places. So, and obviously we have worked together before, so it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a great uh, collaboration. And that made me like, okay, let's do it. And so we moved back and actually it was like honeymoon in the beginning, this coming back to Zurich because it, it was summer in July. Oh, there nice. was totally relaxed atmosphere compared to New York. Where During everyone, the pandemic, yeah. yeah, here, yeah. And it was summer. So we went swimming in the lake and I was like, oh my God, how much did I miss that? And I think, it, I mean, also, the team in Zurich is a lot of them are still the same when I left, which is no incredible. Yeah, and that was nice too. To I mean, we always, as we are, we always globally in touch. There are a lot of meetings globally happening, but it's been nice to 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 come back. And also, I see the obviously the positive parts in Switzerland that things are smoother and go easier, and that there is more of. Um, yeah, it's 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 just like a, it's a beautiful country and mm -hmm. and it's a cool city and it also in a positive way changed. Mm -hmm. I think since I moved and I talked to several people also to 
uh, people originally not from uh, Switzerland who said, yeah, I changed a lot yeah. since you moved in a positive way, because I think it got more international. Mm -hmm. The art scene got much more international. And obviously it's interesting because there's the whole younger generation mm -hmm. coming now. So what are you bringing? I mean, you already spoke a little bit what you want to do here, uh, of course, with your experience from New York. Can you be, m be more concrete on are there certain aspects or also for our audience uh, that they can look out for or? I think, I mean, what I said earlier, what I'm really aiming for is to do more also with um, education mm -hmm. to really have what you said, like, don't have people feel like they can't enter the space that they really feel welcome. And uh, we're, I think we're trying to do even more event based things like to uh, for a wider audience, also not only like conversation, maybe for the show, that's one thing for Zurich. And, and we're really trying to activate the Leuvenbroi with the other spaces, and also with the museums there. And so for collaborating with other spaces. Yeah, I mean, I think the, what we're looking into is, for example, that uh, Kunsthalle is open one night until eight and like things like that, that we maybe look if that does it make sense for us? Are people interested in this? And um, and another thing is is St. Moritz, which I think there we're really like we want to have more collaborations also with EAT, like with the Engadin Art Talks and like with the museum in Sush, like that there is more with the other galleries that there is even more of a, uh, yeah, the collaboration happening that people feel like they can go from one place to the other, but it's kind of clear. I feel like Engadin offers a lot of this. And I mean, for Engadin Art Talks, I talked to Christina Bechtler recently. There are such amazing audiences coming from international also, and it makes complete sense that we find ways to, to collaborate. Yeah, it's and also an interest of Engadin yeah, that uh, totally. during summer when there's no winter exactly. season, people coming for skiing, that they come for other reasons. Yeah, yeah, totally. But I think that also changed, I mean, especially during the lockdown, a lot of people, especially from Italy, there, there are several, um, people who kind of moved to the Engadin at the time and put their kids in school there. And, and there has been more activity in the summer too, but obviously now it's changing again because people travel more. So our main season is Christmas and then until beginning of March. And then you have a whole different audience coming in in the summer. Mm -hmm. And you also quickly mentioned Zurich Art Weekend, which is happening, I think, the 9th or 10, 11th, 12th of June, just before Art Basel, where you're also involved. Um, what can we see there? That's a really important weekend for us. And I mean, I, I just talked to a colleague yesterday from New York and he said, oh, I forgot how crazy it is before Basel because it's just... get sales done there. Yeah. It's just the most important time for everyone. And uh, so for us, it starts, as you said, it starts actually on the 9th with the show opening um, at the Bahnhofstrasse space, which is Picasso Giacometti looking at late works. And that's curated by Dr. Dieter Buchart. That's a great show. And then on the 10th, we're opening at the Leuvenboy um, Jack Whitten with works from the 60s and upstairs Frank Bowling works, which he's done actually during the lockdown mm -hmm. and uh, in 2020. Yeah. So it's, and it's a beautiful show, very both very colorful, very beautiful shows. And, uh, and that's kind of for us, I mean, obviously everyone is open Friday to through Sunday and we expect a lot of international visitors coming, a lot of Americans coming, it's which is exciting. I know. Ah. Actually, this September, because it was in September too, it wasn't that bad, but I mean, now much more are coming, obviously, because I think some people combine it with, with Castle or with, uh, they go to see Venice afterwards. Let's talk about female artists, because you mentioned Venice. Um, Venice is full of female artists this year. Uh, I did a story in 2019 uh, about Art Basel. Is the art world becoming more female? And okay, House and Virt is one of these examples that are, always had mm -hmm. a lot of female artists because of, I think, of Ursula, no? She's quite yeah, interested. she has, um, I mean, 
she has always been very much or had a, or always still has a focus on female artists yeah and i mean that also i think early on was reflected in our our program that there were a lot of female artists compared to other galleries who didn't have so many so yeah and but do you do you see now an uptick also in interest yeah. because if you were ahead yeah yeah. No, I think there is more interest and I mean, thank God, I mean, no. there is more, more visibility. <laughs> and I think I congratulate Cecilia. I think she did a really great job um, at the Biennale. And uh, I've seen a lot of things which were surprises, like new, like which I wasn't familiar with yet. So it, it's been like, I thought it was a really good biennial. I, I enjoyed it a lot. What, what was so surprising? I don't know. No, it was just the, I think the Arsenale I walked through and there were several artists which I wasn't familiar yeah, with. So yeah. and then there were obviously somewhere yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. But I mean, I think the way I don't know, it, it was very good navigation. Also, the the main pavilion, I think I, I really enjoyed it a lot. Mm -hmm. So you can always still explore. Yes, I mean, you can definitely. discover stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's not like when you're in your world, you know it all. No. Definitely. I mean, especially I think the whole young generation, I'm not an expert. So I always look to gallery friends who have galleries who show um, younger artists. I think that is and we've done that actually also in New York. Colleagues of mine, younger colleagues of mine have twice or even three times done um, group shows with artists who now some of them became very famous, but who weren't known mm. at the time. And I think that was great because it's we are, we already have a lot in our program. So it's good to always look mm. above and uh, to learn. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, but there is definitely always new food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What brought you to the art world? What? what yeah. I always, I don't know, I always was interested and um, I did uh, um, as, as I come from uh, cultural management, so I kind of was like, oh, okay, you can do theater or you can do music business or anything, but I always was interested in, in art. And uh, since a long, a very long time. And so it, yeah, it happened when I, I got the job at Hauser back in the days and, um, and then never left, <laughs> basically, at the art world. Yeah. And would you say, was it then planned or it seems like it somehow happened along the way? Um, I mean, I didn't, as I said earlier, I have not thought that I would go into sales. And I thought I would work with, because I like also like to, to organize things. And uh, so I, I thought more that I would stay working with artists basically and helping them to set up shows because I mean, we we work with several artists. It's not just for one artist. And I always thought it was very interesting because you have that life, but you also have, uh, you go to the shows and everything. But I, yeah, I didn't thought I would run a space in New York. I, it wasn't like, a in my head, the plan, oh, I'm going to move to New York, I'm going to run a, a gallery space. It This really came out of experience and, and realizing, yes, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And and I enjoy doing it. And I think there I got a lot of uh, support from Mark Payot as well, because he was really pushing, always pushing me and said, uh, you should do it and you can do it. And uh, I learned a lot from him because he's been in the business for a long time. And so I think that was also a reason like and that happened over the years. But it wasn't like a clear plan from day one that I'm going to end up doing this. And uh, that's interesting what you said about Mark Payo pushing you. Do you think you wouldn't have done it if you hadn't had like someone believing in you? I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, he asked me to come back when our daughter was very small and I was like, I don't know, with the baby. And um, I think, as I, I think I said that also before, I knew what I'm getting into. I knew how uh, we have worked together in Zurich because he was at the time the director in Zurich when I worked here. 
And uh, so I I kind of knew what it's a very clear um, collaboration. It's it's very but yeah, I might, he might have I mean pushed in a positive way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he gave me some some kick to to do things and and be like you can do it, mm-hmm. go for it. Mm-hmm. And and I think that was probably helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be- along the way. Because I'm just think, thinking now, if someone is listening that is at the beginning of their careers, you know, h- how, uh, just to, to see how others do it, right? Was it something that they are always knew? Was it something that happened? Was it, yeah. I think it always, and this is interesting because I've seen now so many um, who have, I mean, in New York especially, we have a lot of interns who start <laughs> as interns and, uh, I mean, they mostly come directly from school, st- from school, exactly. <laughs> and uh, we hired a lot. I mean, it happens still a lot that people then get hired because they do an internship maybe for six months and then you realize, oh, they're actually really good. And you, and they're interestingly, I mean, also in Switzerland, we recently had an intern. She, she said in the beginning, oh, maybe I want to do go into sales. And she realized along the way that she wants to work with artists. Mm-hmm. So she joined the team for the artist liaison. And I think that is, I don't think you should ever say never because there are always opportunity coming up. And I think over the years, you also develop and find out what you really want and what you don't want. And I think, but I I learned throughout the years that sometimes it's good to do things which you maybe don't like to do because they they might bring you further. And uh, and then you develop maybe that you actually do, um, you can do them. But I think for, I would say, yeah, fine, try to, I mean, I think in a big gallery as we are, it's very good if you do an internship to see all the departments and to get kind of view into it. And I think our, my colleagues are all very open to, to talk about what they're doing if people ask. So I think it is good to maybe see more in it and, and find out what you, what you really want. But there are, I think there are lots of possibilities. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we have now, obviously we also have a marketing comms department. There is like, we have a publisher. So some people they like to write. So like it's, it really, there is a lot of options too. But I would say, um, yeah, I can't give a clear guideline of how you should structure your, but I think it's always good to start with an internship and but it, it doesn't always need to be an internship like at Hauser and Wirth where it's so big, all right? Because you mentioned your experience at uh, 303 where a small gallery, you had to do everything. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I think it is, I mean, it can be anywhere. I think it's, uh, it is definitely to work maybe for a few years in a smaller gallery also is helpful because you do experience everything. And I think you start, this is maybe something where I always say, like you understand processes better and you know why this is the, or why this happened the way it is. I think if you've done it once yourself, you kind of know. And, but I still, feel like there are a lot of people, I mean, I have a lot of colleagues in, in New York who started as interns and became now, I mean, my um, Utah who has followed my place in New York to run the Chelsea space, he was an intern in the beginning and he uh, became, he became a sales assistant and then he became a director and now he's a senior director and runs a space. And I don't think he, I don't know, I, I would have to ask him if he had this vision, but I think it also naturally happened. He was just really good. And then like suddenly you, you find yourself in a, in another place. And I don't think it, it was because he likes to do sales. So he, I don't think he necessarily thought he would ever run the space. He probably thought he would become a senior salesperson, but it's going very well, so. Mm -hmm. But you also need to do things that you don't like. It's not like sometimes we hear, oh, follow your passion, your dreams, and everyone thinks it's everything you do along the way is gonna be super fun. You need to have some persistence as well in that business. And I mean, it's a stressful business. It's, um, 
It's never boring, I can say that. It's really every day is different, which is great, and which that's why I still enjoy it so much. And I think the that you meet so many different people is is one of the most beautiful things that it's an international business. Even if you're in a small gallery, you will always inter have international contacts. Uh, but there are a lot of things, yeah, which might be not. And it's, it's uh, I mean, what we're doing now, the run into Basel is, is going to be, I mean, we all will work like basically from Thursday on through. We have Menorca opening with Rashid Johnson, end of the week of Basel. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot. And there are, I think, in any job, you always have the things you don't like. And mm -hmm. you have to... I think this is really something I learned to to push yourself also in the things you don't like and do them and try to do them well and try to learn from others. And uh, I think there is a lot of learning by doing, which I I, I have learned so much from colleagues. And um, I think that is a thing which, at least for me, always worked the best. Because you can have a handbook, but at the end of the day, it's always better to practice yourself and have someone show you how they do it. And then you decide how you want to do it. I mean, this was maybe for me, the biggest thing was to, to, to move to New York because it's everything Americans are different than Europeans. So like to find a middle ground, like because I mean, Americans are much more outgoing. So I had to change. I had to learn to stand up and be like, hey, I'm Barbara. And Switzerland is very much more timid. But I had to find my colleagues in the States who are maybe way more extroverted. And I like it and I like to look at it, but it's not me. So I had to find the middle way which worked for me. And I think that's another thing for anyone who starts. You always have to find your um way of doing way of doing things and where you feel comfortable mm -hmm. where you feel that's me and that's like how i want to be seen from outside so th authenticity yeah. well barbara thank you very much for sharing You're very welcome um your personal path and uh, as well what is going on with house and worth and all the openings uh, around the world well, if you're in Zurich, then uh, visit one of the spaces. You've heard it. You can just walk in, just walk around. You don't need to buy anything. Um, there's lots going on in June, of course, ahead of Art Basel. Uh, there's Zurich Art Weekend also ongoing in the Löwenbräu Kunst Areal. There's a restaurant that you can visit. And if you're anywhere else in the world, you heard it. There's many more locations you can visit. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. This was Swiss Art Biz Goes Löwenbräu Kunst. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or watch this interview on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.